This is the African History Class and my name Black Rasta. Now today we have an interesting story to tell you. Remember our ancestors say that until the lion learns to tell his own story, the tale of the hunt would always glorify the hunter. That is why we must tell our own story from our own perspective. Today we're going to be telling you the story of a Ghanaian spy who outsmarted, in quotes, the American CIA. America is a great country, a very huge nation. How did a small country like Ghana outsmart America in terms of intelligence? Today we are telling the story of Michael Agbotui Susudis. Michael Agbotui Susudis was born in April 1946. He lived in West Germany and he went to college in New York City in America. Whilst he was in America, he dated a number of American women. And he was told time and again how handsome he was, how romantic he was by the American women. So growing up, he knew that his biggest weapon, his looks, his handsomeness, and his eloquence. He got married to an American woman, but they divorced in no time. Now, hear this interesting thing. After the divorce, he decided to relocate to the home of his bed, the home of Ghana. When he arrived in Ghana, he became very good friends with the then leader of the nation, Jerry John Rawlings, who himself was half Ghanaian and half Scottish. Michael Agbotui Susudis spoke with Jerry John Rawlings and Jerry John Rawlings realized that he could use him as a Ghanaian intelligence officer. The very first of his kind. And this was how he was able to achieve something historical for Ghana and the rest of the world. There was a young lady by name Sharon Scranage. Sharon Scranage was born in October 1955. At the age of 21, in May 1976, she decided to join the CIA as a clerk stenographer. She joined it and she was posted to Ghana to serve in this capacity under the then American ambassador to Ghana by name Robert E. Fritz. Robert E. Fritz himself had been told by the end of 1982 that the following year he was supposed to be in Ghana as the Ghanaian representative, in fact, the American representative in Ghana, the American ambassador. He arrived and he was in the country till 1986 as the ambassador of America to Ghana, Robert E. Fritz. Keep this name in your head, it's going to keep coming over and over. He was the American ambassador to Ghana. Watch this. Sharon Scranage came to Ghana. She worked in Ghana. Around the time that Robert E. Fritz was the ambassador of America to Ghana, they worked hand in hand and she was a very hard working woman. It looked like she had no time for any hobbies. And if she had any hobbies at all, it was her work as a CIA employee. Watch this thing that happened. Remember, she was born in October 1955. Remember that? And remember that Michael Agotui Susudis was also born nine years earlier than 
Sharon Scrimmage. Now watch what happened now. When Sharon arrived in Ghana, she was lonely, broken-hearted. She was in need of love. And then there was a meeting which happened on the 27th day of May in 1983. Remember this was the time that Robert E. Fritz was ambassador of America to Ghana. The same year he arrived, May the 27th, to see this, met with Sharon. They had a beautiful conversation. And he overwhelmed her. He wowed her with his good looks. They started talking romance. So Sudis realized that Sharon needed love. She had been heartbroken. And he also needed something very important from the relationship. Rollis was in the know. He knew exactly what was supposed to be happening with the relationship. And he funded the relationship. The government of Ghana funded the relationship between Sharon Scranich and Michael Agbotui Susudis. Sharon was so much in love with Michael Susudis. He threw hefty parties around. Big, loud parties around Accra. And gave Sharon Scranage the opportunity to move from one place to the other as the only foreigner in that capacity. Places that foreigners were not supposed to go. Places that were top, top secret. He sent Sharon Scranage to those places and VVIP places. Sharon was totally overwhelmed. And that was where Michael Agotis sued this threw in the hook and she swallowed it. He got to know so much top secret about the CIA operations and which Ghanaians were spying on Ghana for the Americans. He got all their names. Sharon had all the information and she gave everything to her boyfriend. The sex was good. She loved the sex. And she loved especially how Michael sent her around on different escapades and to different places. At a point, she was even said to have told Michael, Michael, Susudis, it looks like me and you were created to be together. All other relationships that I have had in the past were supposed to damage and destroy me. Thank God. You came at the right time to salvage me from this crisis. The two were in love. Or one was in love and the other one was on a mission. He got all the information. He sent all the information to Jerry John Rollins, the leader of Ghana at the time, and also gave all the information to the security head of Ghana at the time. And he was Kojo Chikata. Kojo Chikata in turn gave the information to East Germany, Libya, Cuba, and some other such countries that were anti-America. What happened then? Whilst the romance was going on, for more than a year, everything was moving according to plan. Until the CIA got wind of some important information. What was the information? An American lady at the American Embassy had been invited over by Sharon Scranage over to her house for dinner. And when she arrived and they were having dinner, she saw a photo on the wall. And it was a photo of Michael Agbotui Susudis, bare-chested, wearing only underwear, and hugging and kissing Sharon Scranage. He knew exactly who Michael Susudis was and reported to the FBI. The FBI decided to stay by and watch exactly the movements of Sharon Scranage. She was invited to America in 1985. 
And when she arrived in America, she was taken through what is today known as a lie test. Technically, it's called the polygraph test. And she failed it. We were told that the needle ran from one point to the other, almost damaging the whole equipment. She had failed it. And then she confessed. Oh, that yes. She actually was in a relationship with the Ghanaian man known as Michael Agbotui Susudis. She worked for the Ghanaian intelligence and at the same time worked for the American intelligence. But giving all the American intelligence to the Ghanaian boyfriend, who also gave it to Jerry John Rollins, for onward transmission to Captain Kojochi Kata, the Ghanaian security head at the time. And because of her information, a lot of Ghanaian people who were on the CIA payroll were arrested, eight of them in number. Some of them went missing. They were executed. Others were in jail for more than 20 years, we were told. And the FBI decided to take action. Some CIA agents were sent to Ghana to meet with Robert E. Fritz, the American ambassador at the time. And at the time, he was on the field playing tennis. Remember, he had a very wonderful backhand smash. But when the CIA arrived at the pitch, he knew that they were not there for his backhand smash. They were there for serious business. They asked him to follow. Him. He followed. They sat down and he was told that Sharon Scranage had failed the polygraph test and this was the information she gave and asked him if he was aware. He said no, he was never aware. Sharon Scranage said she actually contacted the CIA at the time that Michael Agbotui Susudis approached her and actually proposed love to her. And the CIA said there was nothing wrong with a love relationship like that as long as she would be careful. But he was a top spy for Ghana. He was able to use his looks to wow the young American woman that he was nine years older than. He was an extravagant young man who blew money like Pekple during the Homer War. He was a very handsome, tall gentleman who are the key to every nook and cranny of the nation. And they flew outside the country in a love bonanza and extravaganza. Michael Agbotui Susudis. He got all the information he needed and started to backtrack a little from the woman. But listen to the interesting thing. When Sharon Scrudge was arrested, she was told the danger of what she had done. After confessing, they now asked her to lure her lover, Michael Agbotui Susudis, into America. And she did. When Michael Susudis asked, why do you want me to come in a hurry? She said, I miss you. I miss that beautiful thing that you used to give to me. Please come and give it to me again or I will commit suicide. And quickly, he jumped on the next plane and he was in America. He went all the way to Northern Virginia in a hotel known as Motel 50. And there he went, quietly waiting. Whilst he was there, he stripped naked, lying on his bed and imagining what he could unleash on Sharon Scrannage in terms of his libido. My God. Watch what happened now. Instead, when the knock on the door was heard, NCIA agents approached. He knew that he had come to the end of the road. He quickly made a call to Rollins and told Rollins what the situation was. He was allowed to speak to one or two other Ghanaian top officials. And then he was carried away. When he was taken away, he was trialed. And he was jailed for 20 solid years. But then, the Ghanaians had about eight CIA agents who were Ghanaians and even Americans who 
had been working for the American intelligence, giving information to the American people, information about Ghana and beyond. Remember, Rawlings at the time was a military leader. And he was so suspicious of anybody around him, including the Americans. And this was what happened. When the information came out that Michael Agbotui Susudis was arrested, it was rife in the Ghanaian media that the American intelligence system had tried to overthrow Rawlings. And for that matter, Ghanaians were standing up against the American people. It was a very terrible time for the American ambassador, Robert E. Fritz. And in his own words, he didn't think that he was, able to, he was going to be able to leave another month. He was even told by the Ghanaian authorities that his safety was not guaranteed in the country. But he stayed and stood his grounds to negotiate. What was the negotiation all about? We will give you back Michael Agbotui Susudis, but release all the eight prisoners that you have. They are all Ghanaians. We have a couple of Americans amongst them. Release them, and then we will release Michael Agbotui Susudis to you. Whilst negotiations were going on, there was a man by name Obed Asamoa who also came into the picture. Rawlings was not ready to understand anything. He was angry with the Americans. But it took Obed Asamoah to come in. According to Robert E. Fritz, the ambassador at the time, it was a difficult negotiation. But Obed Asamoah was very, very professionally technical. It took six months of negotiation. Whilst Michael Agotis Susudis was in American custody, but they finally came to an agreement. There was another man from the American side by name, Chet Crocher. Some people will pronounce that name, Chet Crocher. What did he do? He was the man who also took a hard stance and said, listen, if a small country like Ghana wants to make an enemy out of huge America, then let it be. It was then Rawlings realized that, no, he was not ready for the American enmity. So they agreed with the negotiations. But listen to what came up next. They agreed that the two nations would announce the truth or the agreement at the same time. They gave the time. But the Americans decided to announce it several hours earlier. And Rawlings got mad. You have broken the agreement. We agreed that at this time we will both announce it. But you went ahead to announce it. CNN has carried it and even VOA has carried it. So the six months of negotiations crashed to the ground again. And this time around, Ghanaians were even more angry, ready to attack the American embassy. But... This early announcement was done by the Justice Department of America. And the ambassador was so unhappy about it, he called the American people and said, listen to negotiations that we have had. For six solid months, so grueling, now one announcement has destroyed everything. They now had to go back and renegotiate. Rawlings was not ready to appear there. He took Obeda Samoa and a few other people to come together to do that. This time, Rawlings made it clear that intelligence had shown that there were some eight Americans at the American embassy who were working against Ghana. And for that matter, they should be expelled within 72 hours. The American embassy complied and removed all eight people. But look at what the Americans did. The Americans also decided to retaliate. They went to Washington and removed eight Ghanaians, exactly the same number, from the Ghanaian embassy in America and sent them home in deportation to retaliate. As if that was not enough, they also suspended every aid to Ghana. And the Rawlings administration started to fret and sweat. But they finally agreed, after all these sanctions 
and suspension of aid. And Michael Agotui Susudis was brought back to Ghana. And this happened in 1985. 1985, when he arrived, Ghanaians clamored around the airport, singing and dancing that a true son of the land who had conquered the CIA and the FBI combined, using his beautiful looks, had returned home. Yes, he returned home. But the Americans had the eight Ghanaians freed from custody. In fact, their Ghanaian citizenships were revoked by the Rollins administration and they were given fresh American passports and American citizenships. In other words, these were Ghanaians but they were working in the interest of America. For that matter, Rawlings said they had already looked down on their Ghanaian heritage and citizenship and they were not qualified to be called Ghanaians. But the Americans received them and said, yes, even though you are Ghanaians, you have proven to us that you love America more. For that matter, we have given you American citizenship. And they were flown all the way to Virginia where they were resettled. Today, we have an interesting story is the story of espionage. The story of how a Ghanaian spy, a top Ghanaian spy, was able to outsmart the CIA and the FBI. But it took the prying eyes and the technical espionage power of the Americans to be able to suspect that one of their own was giving information out, very deep-throated information. To the Ghanaian people. Today, Michael Susudis is no more. But this story continues to be here. Michael Agbotui Susudis is no longer here. But from a relationship that lasted only about one year, the information he got from that relationship has never again been heard by this country by any other Ghanaian spy, that's if there is any. Michael Susudis will remain the topmost spy that Ghana ever had. Michael Susudis remained an American enemy till his death. He was never able to return to America. He remained and died in Ghana as to whether he was honored or not. This is the story in the African history class about the Ghanaian spy who outsmarted the CIA and the FBI together. It's been the African history class and my name, Black Rasta. Today we remember you, Michael Agbotui Susudis, born in April 1946. Today we remember you, Today we remember you. Today we remember you wherever you are. Demifa due. 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 Ni amane hono. Uni yaminko. Uni yaminko. Uni yaminko. And in the burden of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know the story of Michael Agbotui, to so see this, what would you do? Be an any olea mini obafe, Yenzunda Kagani, Meza Kayini, Yea Pabango, Bukaya Nung, Fifi Ayenya, Nukai Nawo, Banaehu, Ebeden. Lele and Jima sing a be kone, Lele and Jima sing a baby. It's been the African history class. And my name, Black Rasta. Come on! Come on! Ela ela chinda la lenwa Ela mu wa ma tinda ba to mu Nda bi tete tete ka ba wela ne Jesu bi ngwe ngwe ne ka ba wela no Ela ela chinda la lenwa wa
Jesús bien, bueno, bueno, acaba, bueno, la nora. Y la 